The History of the Tacony Community The name Tacony was derived for a Native American term for forest or wilderness. That term was Tawakawanic, and it was first referenced back in the mid-1600s. The first settlement in Tacony, after the Native Americans, was primarily Swedish and Finnish settlers. A 1654 map shows the spelling of the area as T-A-C-O-N-O-K, or Taconok. The picture you see in front of you was dated about 1870 and was found in the collection of the Frankfurt Historical Society. It depicts the old Taconi Riverfront, about where the distant saw works is located today. The old Keystone Yacht Club, seen above, is an example of recreational uses which dominated the riverfront prior to the industrial development of the area. The Yacht Club is still in existence today at the same location and is known as Quaker City Yacht Club. William Penn gave instructions to Henry Waddy, also spelled Waldy, W-A-L-D-Y, as seen in the postcard above, in 1682 to develop Pennsylvania's first post office at Tacony. This postcard is in the archives of the Historical Society of Tacony and was issued in 1882 as a commemorative postcard. One of the first estates in Old Tacony stood at the south end of the community and was owned by Linford Lardner, a relative of William Penn. This mansion stood until the late 1800s. Then in 1904, the city of Philadelphia purchased the site. The site was developed with the Lardner's Point Pumping Station, which is still in use by the city of Philadelphia today. Riverfront communities like Tacony remain basically sleepy farming and fishing villages until the advent of the Industrial Revolution. The view seen above, again, is about an 1871 glimpse of the riverfront near where the distant saw works is located today. The Buttermilk Tavern and the Treehouse for Scenic Vistas is depicted in the shot. It was the advent of the railroad that really did change Tacony forever. Prior to the Industrial Revolution, by the 1840s, William Gatzmer, who was the president of the Camden and Amboy Railroad, secured the charter for the rail line which terminated near Princeton Avenue in Tacony. Although in 1842 the Philadelphia and Trenton line was granted the charter to extend to city limits at Callow Hill Street, the residents of Kensington would not allow the railroad through their community and almost overnight Tacony became the center of activity because it served as the terminus for the railroad. The view seen above is an old locomotive at the Lardner's Point pumping station. Tacony, serving as the terminus of the railroad, enabled passengers to take the ferry into town. Hotels sprung up almost overnight near and along the riverfront. The Elm Tree and the Buttermilk Tavern are examples of that. A year after the consolidation of city and county, the German Roman Catholic St. Vincent's School Society chose to locate just north of William Gatzmer's property near Princeton Avenue on the river. The institution sold lots to help build the facility, and some of the original buildings still stand today along our riverfront. One of the buyers of the St. Vincent's lots was Thomas Diston, brother of Henry Diston, who headed the Keystone Saw Tool and File Works in Northern Liberties. This location south of Tacony was becoming congested and unhealthy for his workers. His factory was growing and he needed room to expand. Henry Diston envisioned an assemblage of land where he could build his factory and also workers' homes. He reserved 40 acres of land between the river and the railroad for industrial purposes. When Distant arrived here, Tacony was already a small village, with a couple hotels, the Episcopal Church, some farms, modest homes, and the schoolhouse and town hall, which you see above. The schoolhouse, built of stone, was located at the corner of Longshore and State Road, and after Distant's arrival, was renamed the Henry Distant Public School. This school was eventually moved to Longshore Avenue and Distant Street, and the facility was converted to a firehouse. When Henry Distin arrived, he essentially established a town within a town at Tacony. The schoolhouse, shown above, was converted to the police station, and next door, after the construction of the Tacony Music Hall, the town hall was knocked down to facilitate construction of the Tacony Firehouse. These were both located at the corner of State Road and Longshore Avenue. Other evidence of the town within a town developing at Tacony were the hotels that were in greater use, including the Murs Brothers Hotel and the Harbot Hotel, known today as Curran's Irish Inn.
Seen above is a modern-day view of Curran's Irish Inn at the corner of Old State Road and Longshore Avenue. The first home built west of the railroad around 1876 was the home of Jonathan Marsden. Jonathan Marsden was the master steel smelter at the distant plant. Seen above is a modern-day view of the Jonathan Marsden house at the corner of Longshore and Keystone. Henry Diston and people like Jonathan Marsden and Diston's relative and land agent Thomas W. South led the efforts in the town's early years to develop the town. At the heart of this redevelopment of this new community was the concept of paternalism. Diston was not only worried about the physical needs of the community, but its social needs and its spiritual and moral needs as well. As a result, many institutions and many amenities were developed to enhance the area as Henry Diston's company town. The Tacconi Trust Company, seen above at Longshore and Tulip Streets, is an early example of Diston's paternalism. Diston founded the Trust Fund Company so that workers could save funds to either own or rent properties in close proximity to the plant. Flexible terms were established for any variety of housing style, from row house to single house. Although the Tacconi Trust Fund closed after the Depression, the building still stands today and the lettering seen above can still be glimpsed from the Longshore Avenue side of the property. As part of Henry Diston's paternalistic approach to developing Tacconi, deed restrictions were imposed on all land within his estate, restricting uses that would protect the quality of life of his workers. Some of those restrictions included a prohibition against glue boiling establishments, as well as a prohibition against any facility that served or manufactured alcoholic beverages. Diston Park was established by Henry Diston as a place where his workers could enjoy a peaceful quality of life, buffered from the industrial areas to the east. It took from 1871 until about 1895 or so, but the entire Henry Diston & Sons Saw Works facility was moved from its Laurel Street location in Northern Liberties to its Tacconi location. It was expanding and eventually became the largest saw manufacturing facility in the entire world. What we are left with here in Tacconi today is what is considered the only planned industrial community in the city of Philadelphia. Seen here are examples of the housing stock which populated the distant estate. The distant estate is characterized by grid-style streets laid out with allowances for yards, which contrasted the Northern Liberties location of Henry Diston's old plant. Ample light and air were provided to the residents by twin and single homes as well as large lots. Seen above is a glimpse of a twin home on the 700 block of Tulip Street, circa 1910. The next image depicts a 1910 image of the 700 block of Hegerman Street, looking in a northerly direction. And the next slide is a modern-day glimpse of the same block. The Tacconi United Methodist Church was the second church to build its facility in Tacconi at the corner of Longshore Avenue and Hegerman Street. The Mary Distant School was built across from the Henry Distant School after the Henry Distant School had moved from State Road in Longshore up to Dittman Street in Longshore. The Mary Distance School was built around 1900 and is known today as St. Josephat's Ukrainian Catholic School. This is a modern-day glimpse of the Mary Distance School building. The Tacconi Baptist Church was built on land donated by Hamilton Distant in 1882. It is known as the Grindstone Church because the rear addition, seen here with its view along Van Dyke Street, was built entirely of discarded grindstones that were used to sharpen tools of the Henry Diston and Sons plant. The Diston Memorial Presbyterian Church was built in 1895 by Mary Diston as a tribute to her husband Henry and a child that they lost at childbirth. Henry Diston died in 1878, and it was up to Mary Diston and her sons to develop Tacconi in the way that Henry Diston had envisioned. This is a modern-day glimpse of the Diston Memorial Presbyterian Church. By the turn of the 20th century, the Distant family had impacted almost every aspect of Tacconi life. Longshore Avenue, seen above, had become a built-up commercial corridor where mostly merchants lived above the stores that they operated. This is the corner of Hegerman Street. The Washington Tea House, seen above at the corner of Unruh and Hegerman Streets, as well as the Tacconi soccer team, seen above, known in its heyday as the Tacconi football team, are examples of the permeation of English culture which came to Tacconi as a result of Henry Diston's importing workers from Sheffield, England. At the center of Longshore Avenue at Edmond Street 
was the Tacconi Music Hall, built in 1885. On the first floor were retail shops, the second floor contained the music hall for performances, and the third floor was stocked with volumes of books by the distant family, and it was known as the distant library and free reading room. The Keystone Scientific and Literary Association grew out of this reading room and ultimately helped to form the Tacconi Library, built in 1906 at North Street and Tarsdale Avenue. This is a modern-day glimpse of the Tacconi Music Hall. It is the only property in Tacconi listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Seen above is St. Leo's Roman Catholic Church, built in 1884 and seen today at the corner of Unruh and Keystone Streets. An 1895 overview of the Tacconi and Wissanoming communities show the way the areas developed after the Industrial Revolution. You can see the concentration of homes on the right side of the map and the build-up nature of the riverfront along Henry Diston's saw works. Henry Diston's presence in the community soon led to other industrial operations moving here, including the Gillander Glass Works, the France Packing Company, the Delaney Glue Company, and Fittler Cordage Works. But most notably, seen above, the Tacconi Iron Company moved here in 1891, also known as the Tacconi Iron and Metal Company. This company was awarded the contract to build the mammoth statue of William Penn, which sits today on top of Philadelphia's City Hall. The statue measures 37 feet high and was designed by Alexander Calder. It was and still is the largest statue to top any public building in the entire world. It is 52,400 pounds and sits some 547 feet above street level. Tales are legendary of children who would walk along the brim of the hat in the courtyard of the Tacconi Iron and Metal Works. Each piece of the statue was hauled downtown in pieces so that it could be erected in piecemeal fashion atop City Hall. Adding to the workshop of the world atmosphere here in Tacconi at the turn of the last century was Frank Schumann. Schumann came to town from New York to develop an electroplating process which would coat the statue of William Penn. He was called here by his uncle, Francis Schumann, who served as the president of the Tacconi Iron and Metal Company. Frank Schumann had already patented wire glass, and it led to his wealth, which enabled him to develop the world's first practical solar engine. And seen above is a picture of the Tacconi Sun Power Plant, which was the predecessor to the initial solar power plant built in Egypt by Schumann in 1912. Unfortunately for Schumann, the outbreak of World War I required the abandonment of the Egyptian solar power plant. He reportedly caught the last boat to America before German submarines began to attack, equipped with not much more than hand-filmed reels of his memorable project and a desire to continue to improve the rapidly changing world around him. Although Frank Schumann died at the age of 58 in 1919 at his Tacconi home, located at Dittman and Distant Streets, the inventor continued his relentless work after returning from Egypt. He reportedly worked 16-hour days and predicted the advent of both radio and television. He foresaw the depletion of fossil fuels and the impact of pollution going so far as to suggest a $50 fine for littering. What is probably most amazing about Frank Schumann is that he possessed no formal education. Philadelphia, and Tacconi in particular, had its own Thomas Edison in its midst. And what's almost as amazing is that ongoing commercial solar projects, like Solar 1 and 2 in California, are direct descendants of the Schumann design. Into the 20th century, the Distons continued their paternalistic tradition. Jacob Diston donated land for the library at Tarsdale Avenue in Noor, seen above, which was built in 1906. And this is a modern-day view of the Tacconi Library. By the 1920s, it was apparent that the ferry was becoming outmoded, as more and more demand was created by passengers wanting to cross from Tacconi over to the New Jersey side of the Delaware River. A major development contributing to the growth of Northeast Philadelphia was the Tacconi Palmyra Bridge, built in 1929 and seen above. The Tacconi Palmyra Bridge was constructed to be 5,162 feet long, including approaches, with a 260 foot long drawbridge like span in the center. More than 1.2 million vehicles used the bridge in its first year of operation, and over $18 million worth of new construction projects commenced, mostly on the Philadelphia side of the bridge, on lots designed typically for row homes. The distant company remained in the family until the 1950s, and it peaked at about this time with 3,500 or so workers. 
The last hurrah for the company occurred during World War II, when the Distant Saw Works partnered with the U.S. government to bolster war production. The wear and tear of the constant operations took its toll on the machinery and equipment of the Distant Company, while pensions and benefits became burdensome after the war. Seen above, again, is the last hurrah for the company, which was the leasing of the armor plating plant for the World War II effort. The dedication ceremonies for the power plant and new armor plating facility were filled with such patriotic fanfare that films of the event were played prior to features in movie theaters around the country, and a photograph of the event appeared on the cover of Life magazine titled The Arming of America. The company was given the E Award for Excellence from the U.S. government for war production, and the plants went into overtime as the country's involvement intensified. The company changed hands a few times, and since the 1980s, the Distant Precision Company retained some of the original shop space along State Road near North Street. At the north end of the Distant Complex, where the power plant and the plating plant once were, the buildings have been demolished and the site has been cleared by the Army Corps of Engineers in anticipation of a higher and better use. This vacant site is situated just north of the intersection of Milner Street and Princeton Avenue. After the Depression, economic conditions impacted Taconi, like many other working-class communities. The closing of the Trust Fund and the Music Hall and the shifting of the Commercial Center off of Longshore Avenue led to Longshore Avenue's decline. From the 30s through the 1970s, some large homes, especially along Keystone Street, were converted to apartment use, both illegally and legally. Taconi is still feeling the effects of the increased density that arose from these conversions. By the 1980s, there arose a need for community organizations to help combat and reverse some of the ill effects resulting from these economic conditions, and simply from being a small neighborhood in a big city. In the early 1980s, the Taconi Civic Association and Taconi Business Association were formed. The Historical Society formed in 1990 and established partnerships with many organizations and politicians to develop ways to stimulate pride and to plan for the future. Seen above is an old 1980s shot of 4901 Longshore Avenue. It's an example of how some of the commercial properties and mixed-use properties on Longshore Avenue had fallen into disrepair. By 2001, this property had been demolished, and one of the community's recent success stories is the history of Taconi Mural, completed in 2001 by local artist Carl Yoder. Created through the efforts of the Department of Recreation's Mural Arts Program, the Historical Society of Taconi, and property owners Michael and Donna Warner, this project took a vacant lot and transformed it into a source of Taconi pride, intended to convey a portrait of Taconi history, bridging both the past and the present. What you will see in the mural is an image of the 6800 block of Tarsdale Avenue from the mid-1900s, depicting the Liberty Theater marquee, old-fashioned street lamps, and parade participants from a typical modern-day Taconi History Day parade, including the mounted police, military guards, the Historical Society Parade Saw, and the Diston Dragon Service Club from Hamilton Diston School. In the background, one would see the Diston plant and workers, a large circular saw blade, an image of Diston Park, an old locomotive on the railroad, and the Taconi palmyra Bridge. Overlooking all of this with a look of accomplishment is an image of Henry Diston. The badges on the two officers appearing on horseback in the parade scene read McCluskey and McCarthy in honor of local police heroes. Officer Joe McCluskey lived on Keystone Street and helped to form the Philadelphia Police Athletic League, coaching thousands of youth over the years. Officer William McCarthy was the first Philadelphia mounted police officer to die in the line of duty. This mural is dedicated on September 27, 2001, which today includes a memorial garden dedicated to Alan Wetter, founder of the Taconi Historical Society. Another example of community partnerships was the litigation which arose in the 1980s and 90s from Foodorama, an establishment at Tarsdale Avenue and Longshore Avenue, attempting to break the deed restrictions that Distant imposed against the sale of alcohol. By the end of the 1990s, the communities had prevailed again, and a permanent injunction was placed against Foodorama, ensuring that many other establishments would not try to break the deed restrictions in the future. This was considered quite a win for the Taconi community. The community organizations have teamed up for many cleanups and tree plantings throughout the years. The Historical Society developed the Crystal Lewis Memorial Arboretum along Keystone Street in Distant Park 
from Distin Street to Princeton Avenue, and many beautification projects have arose from these partnerships. In 1992, Tacony History Day was established as a tradition to instill and reinforce community pride. The 21st annual Tacony History Day is going to be held on September 21st of 2012. A summer concert series sponsored by the Tacony Civic Association is another example of community involvement and another way that the community gets together to enjoy each other's company. The Tacony Civic Association has worked with politicians to effect positive change throughout the community on both the zoning level and the community improvement level. The most recent addition to the pool of community organizations is the Tacony Community Development Corporation, who helped develop a strategic plan for the community in 2002 and have focused on both a reconnection to our riverfront and a reestablishment of our commercial corridors as places to do business. Seen here is the old home of Dr. Harry Neal and one of the Tacony CDC's success stories. This property, located at the corner of Diston and Hegerman Streets, was once used as the office and residence of Dr. Harry Neal. In the 1930s, this property was converted to apartment use. The property was rehabilitated by the Tacony CDC in recent years and will be conveyed for residential use. Seen here is what the property looks like today in its rehabilitated state. The Tacony CDC continues to have a positive impact on the community, having recently hired Alexander Balloon as the commercial corridor manager with a focus on bringing new business and new excitement to Tarsdale Avenue. In addition, the Historical Society of Tacony is working on a nomination for the distant estate to become the next historic district in the city of Philadelphia. Ongoing Interstate 95 work by PennDOT will improve traffic flow throughout the Tacony community. This work is expected to be finished by 2014. Expected to be completed in late 2012 or early 2013 is the brand new Engine 38 Firehouse being constructed in a corner of Distant Park at McGee Avenue and Keystone Street. This new facility will feature a community room overlooking Distant Park for use by both the firefighters and members of the community. A public art installation to be unveiled at the new Firehouse site will feature a tribute to both the history of the Tacony community and the history of the Philadelphia Fire Department. And so it is in Tacony that we exist today much as we always have, except that many factories are gone, many have found employment elsewhere, and the trolleys ceased to exist on Tarsdale Avenue in 1992. Many residents long for things and places that are not there anymore, yet many of us remain here, believing that the connection of Tacony to its past is anchored in the vision of what a good life should be, incorporating family structure and community pride. The deed restrictions remain, the churches and their congregations have survived, and there is a nucleus of businesses that serve the needs of the community, as well as an array of fraternal and social organizations committed to improving the quality of life in Tacony. Most significant are the generations of families who have chosen to remain in Tacony, strengthening its fabric and fostering ideals centered in faith and family. This concludes the presentation on the history of Tacony. On behalf of the Tacony CDC and the Historical Society of Tacony, we thank you for your attention.